Now we got an interesting thermodynamics question covering psychometrics. This is important for the FE mechanical, FE environmental, and FE other disciplines. This is stuff we must master, psychometrics. Let's read the problem statement. We're told you are designing a passive cooling shelter in a hot and humid region. The outside air has the following conditions. So the outside air has these conditions. Dry bulb temperature is 40 Celsius. Relative humidity is 60%. And the atmospheric pressure is 101.3 kilopascals, which is 1 atm. To reduce indoor heat stress, the shelter uses indirect evaporative cooling, IEC, which does not add moisture and reduces the air temperature by 10 Celsius without changing humidity. The wet bulb temperature after cooling is most nearly what? What is the wet bulb temperature? That's what we want to find. So visualize this, what's going on? Dry bulb temperature, that's the temperature we start with, 40 Celsius. Then it says we use this fancy system called indirect evaporative cooling, which we'll define below to get a big picture understanding. So that system is gonna reduce this air temperature by 10 Celsius. What's the air temperature? The dry bulb temperature, always. When they say air temperature, and they don't specify wet, dry, they just say air, it's always dry bulb temperature. That's the air temperature. So we reduce that by 10 Celsius using indirect evaporative cooling, and it does not change the humidity. Then we want to find what's the real wet bulb temperature after we incorporate or use this IEC system after reducing that dry bulb temperature. So there's a before state without the IEC system. Then there's the after state, which is what we're going to analyze and find the wet bulb temperature for. Pause the video and see if you can get this and then check your solution with mine. So before we solve this, I want to give you a big picture understanding to contextualize what we're doing just at the end to know that we're doing this for a purpose. That's why we have to get these numbers right, especially if we're designing and building these systems. The numbers are important, but at the same time, the big picture, the context is also crucial to know. Let's define some key terms. First one, dry bulb temperature. This is the standard air temperature measured with a regular thermometer. It does not consider humidity. In a building, it's the temperature we feel and what the thermostats will control. So we know higher dry bulb temperature outdoors gives us more heat gain into the building. And that relating that back to this problem here, we know that increases the heat stress on us, on people in the building, on the occupants. So that is something we have to know about dry bulb temperature. Buildings with proper insulation and HVAC may reach dangerous indoor dry bulb temperature levels, and it requires a larger HVAC capacity and longer operating times. And at the end, this drives up energy demand and cost. And that we can visualize something like this. No, it's just the temperature, air temperature we measure with a thermometer. Dry bulb temperature. Now we have the very, very interesting wet bulb temperature. This is something we don't often think about. This is the lowest temperature air can reach through evaporative cooling. The process of evaporative cooling measured with a thermometer wrapped in a wet wick. In the handbook, they even define this. And to visualize that, imagine a cloth and it is wet. So we have that wet wick or cloth and the thermometer it is not dry like this so this is wet wet state and we get in this case the lowest temperature the air can reach through evaporative cooling so now relating this to heat stress human survival threshold a wet bulb temperature of 35 celsius which is 95 fahrenheit this is the wet bulb temperature not the dry bulb it's considered the upper physiological limit for human survival. At this point, the human body can no longer cool itself through sweating, which is sweating is an evaporative cooling process because the sweat won't evaporate. Exposure to 35 Celsius, wet bulb temperature, even for a few hours can be lethal, even in shade and with ventilation. Therefore, a lower wet bulb temperature means low heat risk, a lower, in this case, lower, we can have low heat risk with a lower wet bulb temperature, even if the dry bulb temperature is high. So even if we have a high dry bulb temperature, as long as we can have a low wet bulb temperature, 
we're ensuring that the sweat that comes on us is going to evaporate and it cools our body through evaporative cooling. So that's why we must consider this and know exactly what it means. And the reason there's a whole heat risk, again, even if the dry bulb temperature is high, because it comes down to the body's cooling mechanism, which is evaporative cooling through sweat and how it is affected by humidity, which is what the wet bulb temperature captures. Dry bulb, wet bulb, this here is the dew point and that contains water. So this is what we are discussing in this problem statement. Now our goal is to use that fancy system of indirect evaporative cooling. So this is a cooling method that reduces air temperature without adding moisture to air being supplied to the occupied space. So in this diagram, we actually have two processes going on. We have the first one is the indirect one, and this is a direct. So the problem statement talks about the indirect and we do use a heat exchanger. What's going on here is we have the primary air. This is conditioned air to the building. It's going to go from warm air outside and it enters the system. So that's the primary air. So we have a fan that makes it enter. Then it passes through the indirect air heat exchanger, the left chamber, where it is cooled without adding moisture. So here it's going to be cooled without adding moisture in the heat exchanger. So after that, it flows through the direct pad right chamber where it's further cooled by evaporation, gains some humidity. So this right here, really, we won't focus on because the problem statement tells us indirect, right? The indirect one, which is the one occurring here. Then we have secondary air. So this is important. The exhaust air, that's going to be, again, we use a fan here, secondary air. We have a water reservoir. So it... It is a separate air stream is drawn by a fan. It flows through the wet section of the heat exchanger where it is cooled by direct water spray or evaporation. It goes here and it is cooled through the water spray. The secondary air ex is exhausted after transferring its coolness to the primary air through heat exchanger walls and cools the primary air by conduction. The outcome is a lower dry bulb temperature without raising humidity and if we have a lower dry bulb temperature we're gonna have a lower wet bulb temperature and that's what we're finding in this problem let's solve this this is important to know definitions are important to know the concept getting the context and at the end we have to get the numbers right when we solve computational problems wet bulb temperature after cooling what we're going to do is use the psychometric chart and we're going to use, in this case, metric units. So here, the way we do this, very simple. We have the before state and after. And I want to show you the before condition. And that recall, it says at what temperature. It's going to be a dry bulb temperature that we have at 40 Celsius. And this is the relative humidity. This is one ATM. It's telling us we can use that chart. So this is the before and that I'm going to plot for us just to help us see where that is as a state on the psychometric chart. So if I go follow with me here, we're going to go to 40 dry bulb temperature. So that's what we have before we use the system. So we can go up top and just draw a line like this. And let me actually extend this a little bit. Let me zoom out here. So this is a little hard to read. So, okay, this works. Go to 40. Here, always on the x-axis is the dry bulb, and it even labels it. Go to 40, go up top, and draw a vertical line following this. So we have the Then the relative, in this case, the humidity is actually given the relative humidity, and it stays the same. It's 60. So that stays at 60, and I want to denote that for us. It's right here. So it's uh, hard to follow these lines. There, there's so much going on. So we will focus only on the 60 line. That's our relative humidity, which actually stays the same after using the system that we have. So that's going to be the relative humidity, and we simply intersect that point. Then after that, we denote the current dry bulb temperature and it's going to be very high so i'm trying to draw here a parallel line to these lines these lines here that we measure this is 25 for the wet bulb temperature 20 for the wet bulb 15 for the wet bulb 
And here they even denote it as 30 wet bulb. So that's your hint. This is 30. This is 25. This is 20 wet bulb. But we must draw a diagonal line. So here, this is way too high, right? Right now, it goes even off the chart if you draw this. So I'm just going to maybe put 37, 35. You'll be okay. That's the before state. Keep in mind. So that number isn't important to solve this, but that's the before state that we get for the wet bulb temperature. So what I'm going to do is go back and denote that for us and just write it as temperature for the wet bulb. So dry bulb, dry. So this is temperature wet bulb in the before. So wet bulb temperature. And 36, 37, let's just do 36 degrees Celsius. It goes off the chart. So it's really high. So that's the before. Now the after state, the after state is what we're finding. And we just simply want to get the temperature wet bulb in the after state. That's our end goal. So here we know we went from 40 Celsius, used the indirect evaporative cooling and dropped it by 10 Celsius. So we do 40 minus 10 gives us a new dry bulb temperature. So temperature dry here will be that 40 celsius we started with minus the 10 celsius and that would be 30 celsius with that we keep this the relative humidity will stay the same so we're still hitting that line then we can read off the temperature wet bulb so going back we use again the psychometric chart no it's not 40 anymore it's going to be 30 30 for the dry is right here go all the way to the top you can extend that obviously on the exam you will use the line tool then here we have the 60 that is the value for the relative humidity it stays the same so let me highlight that for us so we can see it clearly so we intersect somewhere here so we have a state we can find anything right we can find this value which gives us the humidity ratio we can find this. It gives us the enthalpy here. Let's say enthalpy 70, 75, let's say 77. In that case, kilojoules per kilogram of dry air. We can find the enthalpy. But the one we want to find is the important one in this case, which is the wet bulb temperature. So I'm trying to draw a diagonal that's parallel to these lines. This line is going to be the 25 wet bulb. This is the 20 wet bulb temperature. So we are here between 20 and 25 and a little above this. So we know somewhere in the middle here between the 20 and 25, you just do the average. You can do that in your head. Great. But I got 22.5 in the middle, 22.5. Now the middle between these, you can do that again. 22.5 plus 25 divided by two, we get 23.75. So here, 23.75, what would you say that is? most nearly approximate especially when you're reading charts for the fe exam answers are not going to be that close it would be very very close to the value of 24 right definitely not 21 so that's on the low end so we would take that out and 27 is above that 25 this is above the answer more most nearly for the wet bulb is 24. and at the end what did we do we dropped that most nearly we approximated this it was outside the charge that we started with of a wet bulb temperature of 36 celsius to a temperature using our system indirect evaporative cooling to 24 celsius using the system and that right here based on this we know this is the maximum 35 celsius so we're doing a good job here by reducing it that much Typically, it will reduce probably lower, let's say 5 to 7 Celsius. In this case, we're overestimating by 10 Celsius. But that's how we would solve this. Keep up the good work and let's keep practicing.